Hey everyone, how's it going? Kyrie091 hanging out with you today. And you know what? I am not even 100% sure what we're going to do on today's episode. There's a few different things I'd like to do. I don't know which one we're going to do first. You know what we'll do? We will do something fun over here with some thermal expansion machines. Alright, so. This is going to be a really crafting heavy episode. So if you're not interested in watching me craft a bunch of stuff, well, this may not be the episode for you. Alright, so I'll be right back with you once I get some stuff ready and we'll start crafting. Okay, so the first thing I want to make is a rolling machine added by Railcraft. So let's see if we can do that right now. We're just going to put crafting table in the middle, four pistons, and... You know what, I think it might need to be a vanilla crafting table, so let's see if we got any... Oh boy, a lot of nature -a stuff. We'll just use some oak. Alright, make some oak planks, and we'll make an oak craft, a plain old vanilla crafting table. And we'll put that in the middle and see if that does it. There we go, rolling machine. Okay, I'll be right back once I have this stuff together for the next thing we're going to make. Okay, so with most thermal expansion machines, you need some machine frames. So we'll make a couple of those right now. Let's just go ahead and make... Th no, let's just make two. We're just going to make two machine frames. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Okay, so we're going to make two machine frames. You do that like so. And there we go. A couple of machine frames. We're going to need some redstone reception coils. A couple of each of those. And we're going to need a couple of buckets. So we got our couple of buckets here. We got some nether brick. We're going to need some nether bricks. And I think we should be able to make this now. Let's see. Put the machine frame in the middle. Put the bucket up on top. Put the redstone reception coil on the bottom. And I think copper goes in the bottom too. And we get a magma crucible. What's that all about? Well, we'll show you. Now let's do a bucket like that. We're going to do, again, the redstone reception coil copper on the bottom and I believe we put glass on either side of the machine frame and we get a fluid transposer alright we're gonna need our crescent hammer here so let's go place some of these machines now the thing about this is we want well okay here's how we'll do it see the rolling machine is kind of annoying because it constantly draws power even when it's not doing anything. So if I just place the rolling machine right here, uh, it would just constantly drain this energy cell even when I'm not using the rolling machine. So I don't want to do that. And so that's why I put it up on top. So when I want to power the rolling machine, all I got to do is set the configuration to output on top. And, oh, never mind, you have to send it through conduit first. Okay, well, I'll figure something out. I'll figure out a cool way to take care of that rolling machine but we can place the magma crucible and the fluid transposer they gotta be right next to each other you can't do those any other way uh... we're gonna set the configs on this thing so that the magma crucible when it melts something down it's going to send the melted product into the fluid transposer the fluid transposer is going to receive the melted product and i'll show you what that's all about when we get to it you know what i'm gonna do for this thing i'm going to you see, the, th the problem is, is that the, uh, the rolling machine has to be touching a conduit. It can't receive power from this thing. It can only receive power from a conduit. Let's turn our engines back on for a while and fill this thing back up. So we'll put the rolling machine right here. Does it look really stupid? Absolutely. It looks really dumb right there. But at least it's being powered up. And you can see it. It's full of power. So we're going to need to disconnect it when we're not using it. And we'll do that right here. So now the rolling machine is not connected, it's not drawing power, and it's not going to empty this thing out. You can see it's slowly losing power here. And that's okay. When we need to use the rolling machine, we'll get the crescent hammer and we'll hook it right back up, just like this. But for now, let's leave it unhooked because we're not using it for anything. Alright, so... Man, you know, all the stuff I really want... Why is this thing still sitting out in the middle of the room? All the stuff I really want to do, I'm going to really need ender pearls to do it. So, I don't know. I kind of feel like I need to go enderman hunting before I proceed here. Um, yeah. Let's take a look here at what we got, what we got going. 
So, we got a few more new machines here that we haven't really had a chance to use yet. And we'll get a chance to. It looks like the energy cell is just about full, so we'll turn our engine, or our dynamos off down there. I keep wanting to call them engines because that's what they used to be called. Alright, we got our cool looking volcano going here. I like that. Okay, I'll be right back with you once I think of something cool to do. Alright, it's settled. I'm going to go hunting Enderman. I'll do that for a while, and I'll come back to you. Hopefully I'll have some Ender Pearls. I don't know, I'm not going to do it for too long. So, if it seems like it's not happening, I'll probably just go do something else. You know what? Change of plans. Not going to hunt Enderman. Enderman, I'm going to instead melt down some aluminum brass. I should have some cobble around here somewhere, I think. Well, I'll go grab some, I guess. I want to make a decent shovel. One that I can uh, use with a Tinker's Construct shovel. So I'm going to need some cobble. Because I don't have the shovel head cast. And I'd like that. Uh, so I'm going to come over to my part builder. And I don't even have a shovel head pattern. I guess i got to make one of those. That's alright. Okay, so now i got the shovel head pattern. Now I'm going to come over to the part builder. And I'm going to make a stone shovel head. There it is. And once the aluminum brass has melted down, and it looks like it has, I'm going to place the shovel head into the table and pour aluminum brass over it. Let's see if the thing is empty now. Yes, it is. You see it from me? Yeah, we can see right through there. Okay. So now we got ourselves a shovel head cast. I'm going to take a cobalt ore. We're going to make our shovel out of this cobalt stuff. Place the shovel head cast in there, and we'll get the cobalt melting. It does take a while to melt as you can see so I'll be back with you once it's melted down and if you are as annoyed as I am by the sound of animals squeaking and squawking around your base you can make first you make a note block which is a vanilla thing you're probably familiar with but then you surround the note block with some wool and you get the extra utilities sound muffler so let's grab I guess we'll grab a fence post here and we will place this thing outside that cobalt's probably done melting down, but I figured I'd do this real quick here. Okay. Oh, boy. So we'll put this on top of there, and we'll place the muffler on top of that. And no more moving. I think that'll even muffle the sound of chests and whatnot. Now, these chests are too far away for it to muffle it, but if you put one of those mufflers near your chests, yeah, I think it would muffle the sound of the chests. Alright, so remembering, of course, that when you melt things down in the smelter, it gets doubled. You'll notice that we now have two ingots of cobalt in there. One, uh, because we put one cobalt ore. I don't really have a good use for the other ingot for now. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll make a sword out of it or something eventually. But for now, I'll just turn it into a cobalt ingot, and we'll store it. If ever we need it for anything, there it is, cobalt ingot. We're going to use this iron tool rod, because we already have it done. Do we want to use the iron tool rod, or do we want to make it out of slime? I really don't know. Alright. We'll make it out of iron. Okay, so now we come to the tool forge to put it together. And we put the iron tool rod and the cobalt shovel head. And there we go. We got ourselves a nice shovel. Reinforced, too, with a ridiculously fast mining speed. Let's go take a look at what we can do with this bad boy. How are we doing on redstone? Hmm, maybe I want to throw a diamond on it to give it some more durability. Or maybe I just want to throw a redstone on it. Alright, that's what I'll do. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to throw a redstone on this. Okay, so let's check out what this shovel can do. Let's just stand right here and just hold down the click button, the left mouse button, and move it around. Look at that. Look at that thing go. Got off to a slow start, but boy, it sure is impressive now. I guess I'll fill some of this back in here, because I don't want to fall down there. So anyways, uh, you're probably wondering why I went and made myself a nice shovel. Well, it's because I want some sand, and I want some clay. So I am going to sleep through the night, going to charge up my jetpack, and then I'm going to go exploring searching for sand and clay. I'll be back. Alright, so I'm here at this desert over here, kind of near my base. And I'm watching my shovel make short work all this sand. 
Just ripping it up there with no trouble at all. I do like this shovel. And I should be able to get all the sand I need in a hurry here. In fact, I'm actually going to get more than what I need so that I don't have to come back and get sand for a while. So, yeah. Wow. Look at all that. No time, man. Oh, you know what? This is kind of cool. Let's go take a look at this. This is a saguaro cactus, and it's added by Natura. They do grow up, and they do look kind of like real-life saguaro cacti. So look at this one over here. It's starting to grow the arms out on it, just like you would expect a saguaro cactus to have. And they get pretty big, and they get pretty crazy looking, just like a real-life saguaro cactus. I'm from Arizona in real life, so I know what a saguaro cactus is supposed to look like. Anyways, I'm going to mine some more sand here, and then I'm going to go out looking for clay. And uh, I'll be back with you once there's something to show you. Alright, time to make use of this morph skill. We're going to turn into a squid. And squids can't breathe above water. You'll notice that I now have like a little air bubble thing. i got to get into water because I'm a squid. So now that I'm a squid, I can breathe underwater. And that leaves me free to mine a bunch of clay and whatnot while I'm down here. Alright, so I'm on my way back now, and I do have a bit of clay and a bit of sand, and I will meet you over at the base. Alright. Okay, now I need to cook this clay up into uh, bricks, and I could, you know, use my, my iron furnaces inside that I've been using to cook stuff, but I don't want to use the coal that i got to use to cook stuff in here, because I'd like to save the coal for other things. So instead... I will use the redstone furnaces out here. And just like with metal, with the metals I cook up in here, anything that these cook up will get sent through those pipes underground and will land in this chest. So we should start seeing bricks popping up in this metal zores machine output chest. Let's see if that happens. Oh, there's one. There, oh, there they come. So as you can see, the bricks that I'm cooking up are popping right up in this chest here. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to happen. I'll be right back with you once a few of these have cooked up. Okay, so what we're making here is Coke oven bricks. You can see the little info thing says 3x3x3 three by three by three hollow. So I already have enough here to make that. I'm not actually going to make this one here. I already made them. I just kind of wanted you to see the recipe. Alright, I'll find a place to build this and I'll be back. Why don't we just build it right here. So, we need a 3x3x3 three by three by three that's hollow. So there's our 3x3 uh, three three base, and we're going to leave the middle hollow, just like the instruction said, and then we're going to fill the rest of this in. And you can see, watch, when we place this last brick right here in the corner, it'll snap together and form a coke oven. Boom. Coke oven. So we can put some coal in here, and it'll cook up that coal into coal coke. What is coal coke all about? Well, it's pretty handy. It uh, lasts longer and burns more slowly than regular coal. Uh, there are some things you have to do with coal coke, like making steel, for example. But a byproduct of making coal into coal coke is that you get this stuff called creosote oil. Now, what can you do with that creosote oil? Well, there's a couple of reasons you got to find something you can do with it. First of all, if this little internal tank here, which can hold 64 buckets, if it gets full of creosote, the thing will stop working. You won't even be able to make coal coke anymore. So you can get it out by a number of ways. You can put a bucket in here, and then once it gets one bucket, it'll fill the bucket up with creosote oil, and the bucket will be sitting down here waiting for you to grab it. Or you can have the liquid ejected using liquid ducts or build craft pipes or any other number of liquid transport into any other storage tank. Right now I have some build craft tanks. Those are pretty easy to make. It's just well, I should have made them on camera. It's just glass in a in like a chest pattern, in like a eight, like a circle. Like if you were making a chest but out of glass. Well, let's play some fluid ducts here. And we can see this is almost done cooking that piece of coal into coal coke. We'll watch as soon as it happens here. We'll see that two things will happen. We'll get coal coke and we have a little bit of creosote, 500, 500 creosote oil in there. And we have a piece of coal coke. So how do we get this stuff out of here? Well, first we need our crescent hammer. We'll right-click on that, and that gives us the little arrow. But then you need to activate the arrow, and to do that, you just slap a redstone signal right next to the 
the arrow and you'll see the arrow light up. Watch. Boom. And it takes the creosote out of this thing and dumps it into this tank. So you can see we have this big old tank that will hold a bunch of creosote for us. And we'll just let that thing cook up there. Alright, so I guess that's about it for this episode. I don't really have a lot more to say. Um, you know, I've been getting a little bit burnt out on Minecraft lately because I haven't just been playing this LP. I've been doing a lot of Minecraft. I've been playing on servers and doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm getting a little bit discouraged because it does. I don't see a lot of reaction on YouTube. Um, I guess I don't know what I'm expecting. You know, it's my first shot in an LP. But either way... I am enjoying playing, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break from recording this LP series. So, um, you know, for those of you that have been watching and we're hoping to see more of it, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I will come back and finish this stuff up. Hey, where are you going, chicken? Look at this chicken trying to get away. Ha! Got him. Anyway, ooh, I'm about to gain a level. I think I'll go cast one more spell on a cow and gain a level. Oh, I'm out of mana. Oh, no. There we go. Gained my level. It didn't even play like the little level sound with that thing right there. So, anyways, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from recording this LP. Um, I'll still work on my Final Fantasy LP, but, uh, you know, I'm just going to take some time off of this. And uh, hopefully when I come back, I'll feel much more energized and much more enthused about recording this, and it won't really feel like a chore anymore for me. But uh, thank you for watching. And I really do hope you have a wonderful day. Um, yeah. Uh, next time, whenever that happens to be, we'll go over what cold coke is all about and why on earth would you even want to go through waiting this long to turn your coal into cold coke. Trust me, there's a really good reason, and we'll get it, we'll go over it pretty quick here. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Okay. Yeah.